I'd like to talk about uh, the changes in healthcare and how we use technologies to enable these changes. Um, healthcare is changing. It's changing from a doctor-centered uh, medical um, uh, care delivery into uh, patient-centered. Um, it's changing because of uh, different reasons. One of the reasons is because there are driving forces that makes us change. And the other is because we want to change. We realize that we can deliver better care. And uh, um, using technologies is one of the ways to enable this. So let's start with the needs. Uh, the population is aging. We are now the average in the, uh, in the world is 20% and growing. Israel is a young country, so we're 12%, but most of the world is 20%. The burden of uh, chronic disease, preventable chronic disease, like diabetes, lung uh, chronic disease, cardiovascular, hypertension, is continuously rising and going into younger populations. Uh, we are talking about money. It's about 50, growing to 80% of the burden. Um, of healthcare cost uh, spent on this small population of uh, about 20% compared to other populations like a uh, well healthy population that we're spending only 50% of uh, the health cost. Um, also, we have other forces. A work, a workforce is, uh, we have a shortage in workforce. We have a financial model that are changing. Healthcare organization cannot afford all services. They have to use uh, private collaborations, uh, other models of care. Uh, there are social changes. We're talking today about quality of life. We're talking about the patient in the center, not only the patient in the center, but the patient has also um, family that needs support. The burden of care of elderly people with chronic disease is also affecting the entire population. Uh, we are uh, having a change in the care models. We're going into the, uh, we want to give care to the patient whenever, wherever he is, hospital, community, home. It means that we need continuity of care, we need integrated care, and we need to share um, the, the care and the burden between social care and health care and also sometimes patient uh, organization or municipalities and other organizations. That requires to share information, knowledge, and coordinate the care. Um, so, and now we know that the, there is not just um, the burden of uh, the chronic disease itself, it also includes the cognitive, the behavior, and the mental condition of the person. We have to treat it because it's part of, uh, of the care that we have to provide. So we need to deploy solutions to large populations and support new care models. And also we need to uh, have integrated care, personalize them to the needs of each person and his, um, his family. Um, Self-treatment, we have to educate him how to do it and involvement of the family. That means not just setting the services, it means also changing the relationship between the healthcare system and the patients. Um, we need to have the patient as part of the collaboration, as part of the treatment, not only the patient, but also their family. And we have to be proactive. It's not enough anymore to be reactive when the patient comes to the clinic. We have to be proactive, reach out for him, and provide him care when, wherever he is. On this, the level of the information of the system, it means that we have a heterogeneous source of data. We're no longer talking about the physician that is working with the EHR. We're talking about uh, data that is coming maybe from social care, the healthcare itself, the lab, the diagnosis, the EHR, but also from wearable, from patient reported data, from family reported data. And uh, it means that we have to deal in our system with all this type of data and information and turn it into knowledge because bringing the data to the doctor when he has six to 10 minutes to treat a patient, it's not good enough. So what we need 
is to go to the direction of health promotion, disease prevention, disease management when we have that, and engagement. Without engagement of both patient and the doctors, it will not help. It will not make it happen. And then change the behavior of everyone. Um, when we talk about uh, developing a patient-centered approach, we have to talk about holistic approach that include the clinical, the cognitive, the mental, uh, and the functional social uh, parameters of the, of the patient. We're talking about pro proactivity, uh, going out to the community, collaborate with the community, implement innovation, and closure, follow-up. It's diagnosis, it's treatment, and it's follow-up. So what are we doing today? Um, what we have and what are we doing developing, experimenting, and implementing to have the vision in the future. We have different uh, ways of delivering care. We have the traditional one, the clinic, the text, the phone. Um, we added over the years the PHR, the emails, the applications, um, the mobile phone, and now we're uh, even monitoring and um, um, have tele uh, telemonitoring and telemedicine um, system um, that are used all over the world. Uh, we still um, don't have technologies that are talking about behavior, continuous monitoring. We started to implement them when we're talking about special um, communities, special uh, patients with need, such as chronic disease in a program, comorbid patients in a special program. We monitor, we, we may monitor activity or uh, remotely uh, some clinical parameters. Uh, when we're talking about well-being, it's usually do not connect to the healthcare and everybody is doing it on the cloud with his own app and the doctor doesn't see it unless you go and show him, but we're not using it in clinical uh, practice. Uh, but since we started to collect this data and we're starting to use it, this gap will uh, probably uh, very soon uh, will be bridged. Um, we're still missing the holistic approach. The holistic approach in terms of the behavior uh, and age-related uh, diseases, uh, people, how we treat people with restricted mobility, cognitive impairment, mental decline, and social isolation. Um, in the future, we will have to consider all of them. And for that, we have to develop uh, different technologies that will ha help us do so, uh, like uh, remote assessment, continuous assessment at home, uh, behavioral learning, and uh, motivate. We have to motivate the patient to collaborate and uh, also use different technologies uh, to, have, um, to have the collaboration and the results. Now I want to show you a few projects that we did uh, to try different platforms. One of the platform that we used is the robot, the NOW robot, and with the various uh, ways of um, uh, various uh, activities. Uh, coming from the smart home, activating the robot, um, we implemented services of physical training, clinical measurements, uh, entertainment and also environmental control. It was for COPD patients and uh, we wanted to connect the patient first to communicate with him in a different way and uh, not just calling him or tell him what to do uh, but remind him, help him in the process and update him about when he can go out or not. So I'll show you just um, two examples about the clinical measurements. He identifies the patient and also ask him to look at him. He knows that he looks at him. I would like to take your measurements now, please. Okay, thank you. Yes. 
incident. Your pulse is 47. Saturation is 100%. Thank you for your cooperation. So this is one example of how we can do it in a different way. And also, for a COPD patient, it's very important to do physical activity. So what we did was implementing a, activ a physical activity um, exercise on the robot, and they are doing it together. Let's do some exercise. Move your hand like me. One more time. Now, let's try to punch the shoulder. Last one. And now for the other side. Okay. Also um, implemented relation between uh, the clinical condition, the parameters, the clinical parameters, and the level of uh, difficulty of the exercise. This way, we can advance and um, personalize the exercise according to the patient uh, condition. Um, another thing that we did in this uh, project was also to ask him if something is wrong. To ask him. Do you want to call the doctor? Do you want to call a family member? And if he didn't want, then he came back a little later. But if the parameters were not uh, good enough and there was uh, an alert, then it was automatically raised at the center. So we let the patient decide to a certain degree. But when it was needed, we intervened. The acceptance was very high. Um, we can all understand why. Uh, but not everyone connects. There were people who said, I don't like this toy running around in my house, and I need something, uh, something else. And this is a very important message, that we should have many different ways of communicating, but keep all of them personalized to the right person. Another thing is that at the technological level, the robots are still not developed enough. Um, the batteries last for a few hours, and then maybe when we need them, it's not, uh, it's not available. And also, uh, leaving um, a robot running in the house with elderly person is quite risky. So there is a promise there, but uh, we're not sure. It's also very expensive, so we're not sure when it will be available. Another platform we tried in Maccabi was the useful platform. And it included also a variety of entertainment, a connection to smart TV, cognitive training, the doctor, connection with the doctor, connection with the, with the family. They had an application where they can see if the family is available at work, talking on the phone. So if they call and there is no answer, they know why which is very important for elderly people. And also a smartwatch that can alert um, behavior and can alert on changes in behavior that we should intervene. Um, on the clinical uh, part, what we did was using the behavior and the cameras that were in the house uh, to do the ADL Bartel. Uh, the ADL uh, as the different components. It's about changing position. We know that the patient went out of bed and walked, how he walked, balance, uh, 
if he's bathing, if he's dressing upper or lower um, body, if he's preparing food, eating, and uh, we implemented it. Uh, we were able to alert uh, and identify most of the parameters of the ADL. And the advantage of this system is that unlike it's done in uh, most countries today, the social work, the doctor comes evaluate uh, the person and according to this, the social uh, service determine um, what assistance he will have at home. Here you have an ongoing monitoring and you can detect changes uh, over time. You can also detect what is, the, what is the source of the problem. For example, if a person is not bathing, maybe because he's afraid to bath, then you can send uh, a person for one hour in the morning. If he's not preparing his food, you can send him meals. And this way, the organizations can use the resources uh, in a much better way as the um, die. Okay, <laughs> so I won't show you any more movies. Uh, I'll just say that um, the acceptance was very high. Surprisingly, um, it was not accepted. When it was not accepted, it was not by the elderly people who liked it. It was by their family, because the family were worried about watching them at home. So the message here for us was that we have to do some educational, and there are cultural and educational barriers. In order to implement it, it's not enough to have the service. You have to be accepted by uh, their family. Um, and the technological barriers were that, uh, for example, the smartwatch, the patient forgot to put them. Uh, or the batteries last for a few hours, and they didn't charge it. So still there is the uh, a lot to improve, but it's working. Um, now, shortly, three, um, uh, three projects within the CARE platform that we're doing, challenging the cognitive decline. Today, we don't have any means to know what is the cognitive condition of the patient. Usually, if there is a complaint, he come, we diagnose him, we send him to do some uh, cognitive games on the... Um, um, on the internet, and we don't have a follow-up, and uh, we don't know what his condition. Uh, this aims to help him to cope in his daily activities, uh, take his medication, go shopping, um, uh, manage his bank account, and uh, feel independent. <coughs> also, the social isolation and depression are very important to handle, to identify on time, not just the decline, but also transient, if they have uh, a death of a spouse or um, a friend, and uh, also if they had some event, um, then we have to treat them different over time. And we have to be very careful here, um, to not to cross the line between making him the best friend of the patient at home, but motivate him to go out. And the last one is the culture. Um, one important thing when we're talking about implementation of systems in healthcare is to do it uh, in a way that you don't have one system per one person or one problem. You, have, uh, you need to have a system that can be implemented and adopted to different populations, to large populations. Uh, what we're doing here is developing a culture that will help the patient educate him, help the, pa the patient decide, and leave him the decision, make mindful decision about his health and about his disease. And you can use it uh, in healthy people for healthy lifestyle. You can use it in uh, elderly people for social inclusion, mental condition, and uh, for chronic disease self-management. So, what we learned is that we will combine uh, all this parameter in the future service. Uh, the care providers and the family and the patient should be part of the design of the solution. We have a lot to learn from the process. Uh, we are adopting innovation slowly. 
uh, in a way that will fit the workflow, but it's a process that is done. And we have to um, uh, develop a solution that will be personalized and uh, can be uh, changed over time according to the condition of, uh, of the um, patient. Um, another thing we learned is that uh, we have to learn a lot and everyone has to be in the process. And for that, we established Care Center, which is an excellent center for development of um, applied research and development of technologies for the elderly. And it's an international and it combines uh, academia, industry, health care organization, patient organization for the development uh, of uh, technologies, solution, but also methodologies of how to implement them and how to use them uh, in practice. Uh, this is our internet site, and uh, these are the partners that are already on board. We have um, universities, companies, and uh, insurance companies. And thank you for 